Hey everyone, Tom with TK Designs here. If you've ever done any kind of projects that involve 3D carves or engraving, you'll know that even if your wood appears to be flat, it's not flat to the CNC necessarily. So it's a good idea to surface anytime you do that. I'm going to show you the technique that I use to surface my materials before I start my V-carves. Stick around and we'll hit that after the break. Okay, so we're going to start by creating a new project. And in this case, my project is 305 millimeters on the x-axis, 172 millimeters on the y-axis, and we're about 42 millimeters thick. And of course, it's this walnut, so we'll go ahead and we'll change that to a light walnut and go ahead and create it. Now the key when doing the surfacing is, is that we have to take into account the size of the bit along with the uh, amount of clearance we're going to need on either the left hand side or the right hand side of the project. So the very first thing I want to do is I want to draw a box around the project that's going to be the size of the project plus at least the width of the bit and I like I usually like to go the width of the bit and uh, another half inch basically or or basically another 12 millimeters so I'll do the quick math here so let's see a 1.5 inch surfacing bit is 38.1 millimeters so we're gonna take and add 48.1 to each side of our bit. So we're 305. And we'll just round it up to a nice 50 above. So 305 plus 50 is going to be 355. And 172 plus 50 is going to be 222. And we will go ahead and create that file or that uh, perimeter. And we're going to go ahead and surface that on our project. If we scroll out, we'll see that we've got a big distance on either side. Now, when you surface a project, you want the bit to move in the direction of the grain of the board so that you don't leave witness marks. In the board we're going to do, our grain runs uh, horizontally instead of vertically, so we're going to make our tool path to where we go left to right or right to left as opposed to up to down or down to up. So doing that, we'll switch over to our tool paths. We're going to do a pocket tool path and I don't like to go anything more than about uh, half a millimeter at a time with a one and a half inch bit just so that uh, it doesn't slam into the wood and and uh, not have enough power to cut uh, we are using a surface end mill so we'll go do a cut depth of 0.5 surfacing end mill and if we look at our parameters, I'm going to run that at 18,000 RPM at 120 inches per minute with a plunge rate of 8. The reason I'm going with a plunge rate of 8 is because I don't want it to uh, plunge so fast as to not be able to stop it if my measurements are incorrect and I'm going to plunge into the wood. Because remember, this cutting bit doesn't have... Uh, the ability really to plunge into wood, you kind of have to take it from side to side. So we'll go ahead and say OK on that. And I'm going to call this surfacing. And we want to go with a roster cut. And because we're going horizontally, 
we want a roster angle of zero. So if we calculate that, we'll see that our passes are going to start over at the right-hand side and go right to left across the entire distance of the board. And if we do a preview on that, we'll see that it's going to come across the board. And if I'm looking at that, it looks like I may have made a miscalculation. I believe we actually need to increase the size of our border by about 50 millimeters so that it's the width on either side of the board is at least the width of the cutting bit. So we're going to go ahead and edit that. Oh. Sorry, we'll go back. Uh, change the size of our box and I'm going to change that to 405 and we'll set that to 2 272 And we'll apply that, and that gives us a much bigger surface. Uh, since we know we're going horizontally on this, we can actually reduce this size back down to about half. So we'll set that back to 222. And we know that our path is going to go from right to left, so that should be good. Switch back over to our tool bit, or our tool path. We are going to recalculate that toolpath. And as you saw, the outer edges of that moved outward. So now if we go back and do a reset preview, take it at an angle, now you see that we should be going past the end. Although the animation doesn't seem to show that. Now, if your grain is going uh, vertically, if your grain is going vertically, you can change this roster offset to 90 degrees. And when we calculate it, it'll go top to bottom from right to left. But we're not going to do that because we are going to be going horizontally, so we'll set back that back to zero. Recalculate, and there's our path. And now we can go down and cut it on the CNC. If you're using a Shapeoko router, such as the Shapeoko 5 Pro that I use, what I do recommend you do before surfacing your project is going into your settings and turning off your bit setter. The reason I say to turn off your bit setter is because if you don't, when you try to set your zero, the bit setter automatically will re-zero when you start your project. And because your surfacing bit has a flat section on it, it's likely going to hit in the center of the bit setter and not give you the right depth. It's probably going to be about a millimeter and a half too deep, which means that your cuts are going to go much deeper than you anticipated. So I turn that off, and then from there, I'll set the bit up and I'll set my zeros. Okay, so first I will go ahead and get my one and a half inch surfacing bit loaded up. Uh, when you're zeroing, you should always zero your X and Y on your start location of your workpiece ahead of time using a eighth inch bit or a quarter inch bit because you'll get a much more accurate measure than if you were to use this uh, inch and a half bit. Uh, I did that zeroing off screen so we 
are good there. And what we're going to do is now we'll lower our Z axis. Oops, lowered it too much. We'll lower that down until we get right to the surface of our material. And I'll reduce the size of the again. And I'm actually touching there, so raise that up just in here. And Okay, so that's just catching now. So from there we will set our zero for our Z zero. And we are set. Now we can go ahead and raise above our workpiece. And we are ready to run our job. Okay, so as you saw in the second cut, the second cut surfaced the material a lot better. Uh, some pieces of advice that I would give when you're doing your surfacing, don't just surface it on the side you intend to do your cut on, but surface it on both sides so that you know your piece is flat across the CNC. Uh, number two, if you're using any kind of a bit setter, I would disable that and manually set your zeros so that you don't uh, have your bit go deeper than you intended. And number three, if you have your bit crash, slow down the feeds and speeds or raise the bit up just a tiny bit or the depth of cut just a tiny bit so that it's working within the realm of your uh, uh, CNC's capabilities. Uh, that's all I've got for this video. Uh, please take the time to uh, give your comments in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe if you're not already a subscriber, and in the meantime, here are some other videos I think you'll enjoy.